Hello, good morning from Aviva. You can see my backgrounds tend to shift. Now, today we are going to do Q&A number 39 on events and play parties. So, you've been asking me questions over the last 24 hours or so, and I will be answering them. If you have a question, please put it down in the little question button down the bottom there. And I can only answer above the board questions here. <laughs> Below the board <laughs> is in a separate place that we cannot speak about. So yes, I'll be doing that after this. That's gonna be my new format, about half an hour here, all the things that are nice and uh, acceptable. <laughs> and then uh, the other half an hour in the good places where things are far more acceptable to me. So we shall begin. Mm. I see one person can't hear anything. Can everybody else? Tell me, tell me. So questions, questions about events. Yes, everybody, events and play parties. Will you ever host a party in the US? I have had a tea kink party where I brought together a bunch of doms and we had a great time <laughs> uh, drinking tea and eating. And it was the first thing most of us had done after the pandemic. And so that was really lovely. In terms of play stuff, I host little private play things every now and then, but like a big thing, I don't know whether I'd like to carry the weight of that kind of a responsibility. <laughs> yes, all right. So some people asking what I'm serving and then being very specific. Remember, keep it above the board here. Uh, also, ooh, this is a nice one. Ooh, okay, I guess this person has a private account, so I'll read it out instead. And this one says, is there a lot of structure, rules, and boundaries? How wild can these, I guess, play parties get? So structure, rules, and boundaries at play parties. I would say this is very much up to the organizer and the people involved. A lot of the times they have a communal safe word. A lot of the times there's a little briefing that goes out before where people talk about their rules of consent, whether it's enthusiastic or how you would approach people if you wanted to play. So I would say pay attention to the people who are organizing it. If you feel like there's no structure, ask the organizers what the structure is. I think that you really need them in order to have a safest place to let yourself go as possible, as well as to have a, a good time that's going to be on a similar page to the other people there. So. If you don't spot structure and they don't have anything to say for it, suggest that they think about it. <laughs> and if they continue not to, I would suggest that um, maybe elsewhere would be more um, thoughtful places to engage in. So please ask the questions down the bottom. Mm, asking about torture, can't answer that here. Are there any beginner events for potentially subby men? There are. I know of some specifically in New York and London, where I mostly have my community, and they are often ran by, run by pros. And I would say, ask your resident pro if they are aware of any group events that they are running. A lot of the times, um, I know that Goddess Cleo does one in London, and they will have been running it for a while. They obviously have a lot of experience with a lot of different types of people, as well as beginners. And they would be in a group, and they would have structure. <laughs> and yeah, they would be able to answer a lot of your questions and look out for you. So trusted community members who are pros, I would say are maybe who I would suggest going for um, if you're a beginner to these play events. And then there's also non-play events where you can meet people in the community. If you just get onto a good old vet life and you have a look in your city, there's probably some munches. Munches are little social gatherings where there's no play. That um, could be a really nice way for you to just become aware of the community first and have conversations. So 
That was a lovely question. Uh, okay. Mm, oh, question very simple. BoundCon, which is in Munich at the moment. I've always wanted to go. It seems like, um, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can even say the word bondage. <laughs> Gear Central uh, in a wonderful, wonderful way. I know that a few of my friends who are very into that sector of things have gone and gotten the greatest gear. So I've really wanted to go for a while, but it's clashed with the fetish ball over the last few years before the good old pandemic. <laughs> and, uh, but this year it was separate, but I had already had plans before I became aware of their dates. So next year, hopefully I'll figure that out. And I, based upon the people who I know who have gone, who have enjoyed it, I would suggest that it's a great one to go if you're gear intrigued. Mm. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> ah, okay, this is nice. Is it the right type of event to discover BDSM experience? I'm assuming that a, you're asking, is the play party the right type of event to discover BDSM experience? I would say that it really depends on how you react to things. So do you react better to small groups? Do you react better to talking first? Do you react better to stimulation overload? <laughs> so there's so many different ways to kind of dip your toes in that could be a little bit more voyeuristic than engaging and or it could be more informative than experiential. So you really need to become aware of how you think you would best forget react and if you don't react very well give another type of go uh yeah so like i've already mentioned there's social meetups there's social meetups before big events that are associated so you can meet people before the event there are the events themselves there are smaller parties that you could get vetted for maybe um, there are conventions so there's all sorts yes <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can answer this. Okay, it didn't come up anyway, because I guess it's a private account. Most exciting activity you've engaged in at a party. Um, <laughs> let's say it was a group scene. All right. Uh, is there a schedule of European fetish parties? There is, and I have seen it. And it's been a while since I went on that site. If anybody um, knows of it... Uh, there's a, it's a well-known directory that's been around probably since the 90s because it looks like it belongs to the 90s. <laughs> then please put it into the chat. Uh, but I think back in the day, I just uh, Googled basically uh, international kink parties or something like this. And there might also be a forum somewhere on FedLife that also promotes this directory. So, and there might even be some... Um, how do you say forums who are actually talking about it in general so yes sorry to not answer that so directly but yes okay <laughs> Ooh, what is my favorite event in the whole world and why hmm. the issue <laughs> is that my desires are very diverse <laughs> I really enjoyed being at the German Fetish Ball last week because I would say that it has the highest level of, of uh, international um, latex uh, community uh, that comes together. Uh, there's, of course, very specific smaller events in Japan um, and anywhere, actually, that have very dedicated latex people behind them. But I think en masse, it's really incredible to see that specific event. There's not really a lot of play, there's not really a lot <laughs> um, in terms of that going on, but in terms of the visual and the dedication, I love to see that. Um, and then I would say, scale all the way down from there, I would say some of my most lucid and crazed experiences have been in small play parties where we all know each other either very intimately or enough. And um, we're kind of in a smallish group uh, of friends. And so there's a certain sense of communing that's already very uh, close and broken down of a lot of barriers. 
And I would say that those have probably been the most raging for me. <laughs> Not necessarily super organized or, but um, yeah, a smaller group of people, maybe up to like 12, maybe, maybe 15 in a space that could have one or two pieces of furniture even, doesn't even necessarily need too much, but it has a bunch of minds who are creative <laughs> and ready to go. Uh, those have those are maybe the extremes that I'm enjoying at the moment and they shift and then you have the wonderful ongoing spaces like Club Verboten in London and Berlin uh, that I love to dip into once a month every now and then and they have a lovely play space a lovely social space and a lovely um, feeling around that and they hold a a very um, good safeguarding team also which is always really nice to be around yeah so I would say that that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. But these things can shift and do shift. Hmm. <laughs> this is a cute uh, question that's also probably from a private account. Uh, is there something going on in Dubai next week? And I think they're asking that because they're seeing um, so many mistresses there at the moment. I don't think there's anything official, but I know that a few friends of mine are going to be there. <laughs> just uh acting up probably i know that mistress mika is going to be there an evil woman and probably the polish crew so yeah look out maybe they're up to things that i don't know of but in general i'm sure it'll be fun <laughs> okay so ah this is a nice one Oh, also can't be shared. Also from a private account, probably. First timer here. I want to play, but how should I let people know if I'm a newbie without breaking the flow? Um, I'm guessing that you mean at a play party. So if you're a newbie and I don't think you should worry about breaking the flow. I think you need to be kind to yourself and um, yes, be cautious about how you approach people. But uh, yeah. Don't try not to worry about anything except for sticking to the parameters that the organizers have laid out for you. I would say go to a mixer like Club Verboten before <clears throat> they have like a social before the event and then it's a chance to meet people. Sometimes, like I know in the Berlin Telegram group, they've opened it up so you can maybe introduce yourself very nicely and ask um, whether there would be anybody willing to chat or to, um, you know, to just do a hello or something like this. So I would say it might make it easier for yourself if you intro yourself to specific people beforehand rather than uh, going for it on the day only itself. If you have the guts to just go on the day, good for you. <laughs> but then I would say approach people in the social areas rather than the play areas first and introduce um, who you are, say why you've approached them, why you find them, uh, why you appreciate them, um, whether it's attraction or however, and say tell them that you're new and ask offer them something and if they would like to accept that you're available I, you know things like this so um <laughs> be a courteous human being but i would say that uh the social before the event is probably an easier way to go to get familiar with things okay hmm all of you are asking things from private accounts so the, this question is what are they I guess, what are play parties? What are they focusing on? What's their purpose? Do they have anything specific? So a play party is an opportunity for people um, who are interested, I'm gonna talk about kink play parties, who are interested in kink, to gather and to play, to interact with each other in ways that are focused on their kinks. So what are they focusing on? They're focusing, I think that they can have different um, focuses depending on who's involved. Uh, who's organizing sometimes it's too actually i think the main focus in general depend doesn't matter on the on the kink being explored is to have a, a an expression of their desire in a space with others i think it's as, as simple as that um what's their purpose uh yeah i would say that <laughs> and then everyone's going to bring a specific thing to the table in terms of if they're looking for joy if they're looking for uh, <laughs> feeling a certain way so yeah Hmm. Ooh, ooh, this is nice. What events am I planning on attending in the coming weeks 
four months. So if anybody is aware of any play parties in Ibiza over the next two weeks, please reach out. <laughs> I would be open. Um, and then uh, other than that, I'm headed to New York after this for Pride. And I'm going to be going to a few private um, events for queer folk. Um, where we are going to um, partake in the march uh, during, and then it's going to also be little warm-ups before Torture Garden in New York, which should be fun. A lot of people I know are going. Um, what else am I doing? I'll probably go to Cirque du Squirt by uh, Lola, uh, Miss Lola in New York, which I think is on the 28th or the 29th. And then there's also an event at the Museum of Sex, um, run by a collective uh, that I want to go to. I think it's an exhibit and also a screening and uh, maybe even some talks. So there's a lot happening in New York for Pride, which will be great. Um, aside from that, I have to head back over to Asia for the first time in a while. And there's more private things there because a lot of things unfortunately need to be underground. <laughs> Although, um, celebratory stuff for Pride in Singapore will be happening soon, which is lovely. And what else? What else? I think that's probably taking us enough. And then when I get back to London, of course, I'll get back to my good old club for Bolton. <laughs> and there's a new party I want to check out called Scene. And I also um, am going to be going to the one night parties by my beloved mistress Adrena and Miss Gold, uh, which is a play party only for women um, and non-binary folk. And also for their social, which they're going to, I don't know if they've announced that. Oh, maybe I shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> anyway, sign up to the one night parties and maybe they'll uh, forget what I just said. <laughs> uh, okay. And anything else? Oh, these are, this has been a really lovely Q&A. Thank you, everybody. Um, it's been really nice talking about the things that I enjoy. Uh, and I guess it, a, a lot of the reason why I float around so much, a lot of people ask me why I, whether I get tired. It's, you know why I float around so much? It's because in lockdown, I realized how much my community meant to me because I couldn't travel to see them, which is what I normally used to do from Bali. I was just locked down in Bali and I didn't have my community there with me. And so now I'm making sure to make them a big feature of my life. And so it looks like I just go from event to event, which I kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mostly do it so that I get to feel loved and love the people that I appreciate. So people are asking things about sex. I can't really answer them here, I don't think. <laughs> but I will be answering them later on the, the platforms that shall not be spoken of. Um, okay. <laughs> A lot of people are asking about my ring. So... Oh yes, that's very cute that, that you notice that um, there's, a, there's this attachment point to it. And uh, whether it signifies that I attach with the submissive side. I bought him, but it's um, next to impossible for me to get into a submissive headspace, which I think are different things. Um, I mostly just love how it looks. <laughs> I can still attach somebody to it if I wish, and then pull, pull on that way. But it's by Bond Hardware from New York. Who, uh, more people who I really adore and who I can't wait to see also. Okay, so I think that those are pretty good questions for the events and play parties edition of the monthly Q&As. Uh, okay, maybe just one or two more. One that says... Uh, I don't know. Why. Okay. Is there anything I need to know before I go to my first event or play party? I would say read up on whichever party it is that you're going to and ask the organizer and maybe um, figure out why you might want to go. Is it because you just want to perf? <laughs> is it because you want to feel like you aren't alone? Is it because you want to finally engage? Is it because you want to find new people to engage with? I think that uh, sorting out your motivation will help you manage your expectations. And then simply ask the organizers who are hopefully trusted and known in the community what 
um, they would expect of you and uh, see if you can adhere to that. I would say that that's probably more than enough for your first event for you to think about. Mm. What is a mistake most people make at an event or party that is easily avoidable if they knew? Um, let's see. Mm. I mean, to me, it seems obvious, but I assume that for people who've never ever been, uh, consent, consent, consent. <laughs> do not assume that you can do anything with anyone or even towards somebody. I mean, in general, that should be the way that you are living your life, please. But especially in a context of a play party, there's going to be specific rules to there. And ask before you get there and familiarize yourself and maybe ask somebody to take you through that process. I would say that's the most important thing that I would love it if people would know. Easily avoidable dress code. <laughs> Maybe that's something slightly lighter, but a lot of these parties take um, dress code very seriously because, I mean, it's the first thing that you see when, when you're in a space with somebody, right? And uh, when you're presenting yourself to somebody. And a lot of the times, um, there's a, a little bit of a commonality in terms of how people are dressing and how people are investing in what they're dressing. In, you know in what they believe in and how they how they enjoy that expression of themselves and they believe a lot in that and if you are totally new and you're not like aware of these um, directions or if you're treating it as a tourism experience then um, it's going to be something that's very obvious to those who are looking towards you and it's a signifier that you are res respecting the environment and maybe this can become more flexible over time, but I feel like it's kind of a way that people are using to regulate uh, spaces at the moment. So I would say those are maybe the couple of things. All right, just one more, and then I'm gonna switch over to the less um, above board place. Um, <laughs> am I going out tonight? Not tonight, but probably tomorrow. What's happening in Ibiza? Tell me about play parties. <laughs> Oh, what to do if you're nervous and alone? I kind of addressed that a little bit before about how to go to a social before. Um, let's see. Okay, I think I got through most of the good ones. And if I've missed out something and you thought it was good, then please let me know. Ah, I am remembering a very important one. And that was in my uh, DMs, which I couldn't pull over here. And you know, my DMs are also a mess. Don't DM me, please. <laughs> Ooh, there's two now that I want to answer. Okay. Oh, there's three. Somebody wants to accompany me. <laughs> you could apply. There's places to apply for that. Okay. So, two. Mm, how to take my first step as a single man there? I think it would be similar to the things I've already mentioned. Uh, understand that, um, unfortunately, historically... Uh, single men uh, in spaces of sexuality and not um, can be seen as a threatening presence. Um, and so be aware of that, one. Two, uh, familiarize yourself with, um, again, the premise, the rules of what you're entering into. Three, maybe try to connect with somebody beforehand so that um, you can engage without necessarily... Uh, following through on <laughs> that specific nerve uh, associated with that specific um, presentation. <laughs> okay, so now to get to that question that was in my DMs, I think it was something like, um, if you go as a couple, which is a great question, and it's your first play party, how do you establish boundaries? How do you establish boundaries, boundaries? <laughs> Talk about it before. <laughs> uh, talk about it before. Say, um, are we comfortable playing with other people? Do we only want to do it together this time? Uh, do we just want to watch right now? What if we change our mind and we want to do more than watch? Uh, are we going to let that happen? In general, I believe that um, setting the parameters beforehand and you can de-escalate from there is fine, but to escalate from there can kind of get out of hand. So maybe keep that in mind also. Understand that um, you probably need a safe word 
not only if you're going to be playing with each other, but if they do something that you that's pushing you mentally too much. I think that's also very important. People don't use safe words for mental pushes um, as much as I would like them to be aware of. Uh, yeah, that's probably maybe enough <laughs> for now. Um, mm, yeah, and debrief also. <laughs> Communication is very key. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining me on today's Q&A, which has been about kink events and play parties. I hope it's been useful. It's always a joy for me to indulge in thinking about these things. And now I will go on to my other platforms where I will address slightly more risque wonders. <laughs> Bye.